What? At center, we see what I presume to be Lucian warriors and the kings of Fjord. I thought that was Arden I've again. I've learned a great deal about the first king of Lucis, but I never knew he was second in line. It seems to depict a legend in which the chosen king dispels the darkness. If that's true, does that mean Lucis intends to someday stand above all others? <laughs> Their trifling tales mean nothing in the face of our superior technology. Only we can restore balance to our world. At the top of the painting, we see the Oracle herself. The bloodline of the Oracle is one of the oldest in Eos, originating with Eromirus Flore. Only they possess the power to commune with the gods. This painting depicts the Oracle as some goddess of light herself. She'd doubtless prove a powerful ally if she could be persuaded. I see. On the sides of the frame, we see the Hexathion. Conspicuously absent is the traitorous god of fire who started the Great War of Old. Perhaps developing a deeper understanding of the demons will bring us closer to comprehending their divine counterparts. But what if I were to find a way to combine those two disparate elements? By my estimation, the grotesque creatures depicted here are likely demons. Could this mean these monsters will be harbingers of the apocalypse? If only we could find a way to harness their power for ourselves. The line of Lucis was chosen to eradicate evil from Eos. And with the divine on their side, how could they fail? I'll tell you who's the harbinger of the apocalypse. If I could point. Rest? No, thank you. Just a child looking for candy. What the heck? Wait, what was that noise? This is weird. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Uh, no. So many journals. All this lore I'm getting. Oh, it's me. Adagium. That is what the Lucians call the monster they imprisoned for 2,000 long years. His powers surpass those of any mortal, and his body is all but impervious to attack. It's no wonder the Founder King sealed him away on the Isle of Angel Guard. He undoubtedly feared this monster might challenge his reign. I see. Ooh. It seems fortune smiles upon me. Though the Lucians kept him locked away for 2,000 years, I've managed to secure Radagium for myself. The raging winds and stormy seas may have cast all others away, but the waves parted for me that day and led the way. While I've yet to conduct any official research, the potential he proved in combat was most promising. I estimate his powers easily surpass anything mankind has ever seen. Perhaps this streak of luck has just begun. Is that all you see me as? A tool? <laughs> Fascinating, isn't it? I pored over the ancient texts and found scarcely a mention of you. I barely believed you existed till I saw you with my own eyes. With your help, my research is proceeding smoothly. You have my thanks. You're welcome. Demons were first officially recognized as a new species roughly 200 years ago. According to ancient texts, however, humans have suffered from a parasitic plague wrought by the demons for upward of two millennia. Demonification is caused by a mutant strain of plasmodia that takes root in living creatures and changes their cellular structures. Infected creatures begin to disperse miasmal particles, the spread of which is known as the Star Scourge. This model is a replica made from plaster poured into a demon-shaped cavity discovered deep underground. Demons sublimate when their vital functions cease, so this particular specimen must have vaporized after the mud around it had already solidified. Scientists believe this subject burrowed into the Earth in order to shield itself from the light of the sun. That's some interesting lore you've got for me. Yes. Given the demon's aversion to light, they typically stick to the 
shadows until the sun fades and the night falls. Adagium, however, is different. Unlike his demon brethren, he can still function uninhibited in broad daylight. Of course, the ultraviolet rays harm him, much like they would any other demon. Yet his cells regenerate quickly enough to essentially negate the damage. Yeah. It stings. Yeah. Like the light of the sun. Perhaps. Uh, I'd best cover up. It stings, but you're still alive. Unlike these demons. I guess this is just a lore playthrough. We're gonna be learning some lore all day, every day. This is our world? Oh, that's... that's... that's a lot of lore. That's a lot of lore. It has been estimated that Eos came into existence some 4.5 billion years ago. Ancient myths tell tales of six protector gods who first alighted upon Eos in the ancient Solheim era. Fossils thought to be remains of the oldest members of the human race were discovered in the Pistala region. Some claim that humans discovered fire in the Sukarp region even before the dawn of the Solheim civilization. According to legend, the fire god Ifrit first bestowed his burning wisdom upon a man who later sat the throne of Solheim. The mechanized civilization of Solheim is presumed to have originated in the Disgai and Klain regions. Exactly when the civilization rose and fell, however, remains the subject of much investigation. The enormous crevasse separating the regions of Klain and Duskai is known as Telpar Crag. It is here that the War of the Astrals is said to have taken place. When Ifrit tried to reduce mankind to ash, the other gods fought back, and some claim this clash caused the collapse of Solheim. I kind of wish we got to see Solheim. It sounds pretty cool. Or at least a pretty cool place to explore. Too bad. It is said that Ifrit, having lost the War of the Astrals, was interred atop the Rock of Rabato. Ooh, I need him. After the war, the ice goddess Shiva allegedly sank into a deep slumber, nestled in the Gorvas Rift of Volup. To this day, no one knows what became of the blade god, Bahamut. The earth god Titan can be seen supporting the meteor at the heart of the disk of Kothis in the sky. So he's slacking on the job when he comes to help Noctis? As for the storm god Rama, legend has it he sealed himself away within Fosha Hollow in the sky. Yeah, I've seen him. He's my grandfather. The sea goddess Leviathan disappeared in the wake of the war. Some say she swam below the waves and slumbers beneath the city of Altitia. Some 2,000 years ago, the gods granted Somnus Lucis Kylum two gifts. The sacred stone and ring. With these in hand, he founded the kingdom of Lucis. In the centuries since, Lucis has managed to expand its territory while struggling to suppress a parasitic plague. As of ME722, Moore's Lucis Kylum sits the throne as the 112th monarch of his line. Regis Lucis Kylum is King Moore's firstborn son and first in line to succeed his father. Are we gonna see Moors? Angelguard, off the coast of Golden Key, is an uninhabited island that Lucians regard as sacred ground. Ancient texts tell of a monster known as Adagium supposedly sealed away within, but investigations into its existence have yet to provide conclusive evidence. This is actually some interesting lore. Soon after the establishment of the Kingdom of Lucis, House Fulleray founded the nation of Tenebrae. The Empire began its occupation of Tenebrae in ME359, a move that was initially met with much apprehension. In order to assuage the dissenters, the Empire preserved the Oracle's home of Fenestala Manor. This concession was partially made for political purposes. House Fleuray enjoys close ties with the line of Lucis. I see. The Accordo Protectorate has developed into a bustling league of towns at the heart of maritime trade. 
In ME-606, the Empire won an important battle against the Allied forces of Lucis and Accordo, and in turn, annexed the Protectorate. The country is steeped in traditions and cultures that are incompatible with Imperial rule, so the Empire has permitted it a measure of relative political autonomy. All these places sound so interesting, but we'll never get to see them. Centuries after the founding of Lucis, a movement to revive the lost civilization of Solheim arose around the Welfham region. Leading the charge was House Aldercat, whose brave deeds brought about the rise of the Niflheim Empire. The Empire built upon Solheim's magic technology and employed it for military use. This new firepower helped the Empire fell its foes taking Tenebrae in ME-359 and Accordo in ME-606. As of ME-722, under the direction of Emperor Aedilus Aldercat, the Empire is developing new arms fusing Magitech with demons. Vestiges of the ancient Solheim civilization can still be seen in the ruins of Piteus and Steel of Grove. Several ancient structures also dot the forest of the Fall Grove, that encircles Castle Mark Tower. Excavation of these various sites is currently underway. In ME 501, during an expedition in the Yulwat region, the Imperial Army discovered a new species known as demons. That was actually really interesting and sad. Because now I want to go to those places. This must be how the gods feel looking down upon our world. Here we have a model of imperial territory. It includes our present lands as well as our future acquisitions. Feel free to have a look. Again, I was like, who is Arden talking to? But he's not talking. I had a look. There's something you should see. Come with me. Anything else to have a look at? I found something most interesting on the Rock of Ravito. If my experiment on this specimen succeeds, it might provide the information you've been looking for. This way. And what information am I looking for? Didn't I just say the past is in the past? What information am I looking for? Freet the Infernium. <gasps> oh. You subjugated a god and brought him here? He was sound asleep, just like the legend said he'd be, so we put him on ice. Do you think you could turn him into a demon? If you managed to demonify a deity, you could learn truths no mere mortal could ever dream of knowing. You'll access 2,000 years of his memories, and if you can control him, he'll be a weapon of supreme power. It's certainly an enticing offer, isn't it? Just think you could exact sweet revenge through divine retribution. How do you know what I want? I don't, but I know you have no other options. I could well, just not do shall it. We? I'm not gonna do it if it. I'm gonna free you. Come see the fruits of my Magitech research. This way. And we're gonna become best buds the forever. The ancient civilization of Solheim, forefathers of our magic technology, once flourished on this land. Had they not incurred the wrath of the gods, they may have remained prosperous to this day. And you wish to restore them to greatness? To surpass them. Which is why I need you to lend me your strength. I'm busy. But I'm certain magic technology and demons are the keys to unlocking the door to a new future. I'm trying to bond with a god. Forgot what I was gonna say. It's ruined. It's all just ruined. I'm coming, father. Wait for me. No? Yes? What? Why wouldn't I be ready? Yes, I'm ready. Lucians? But how? Oh. 
Kunmi squad, Adagium sighted. Initiating Requesting engagement. backup from Nimbus squad. Shutting down communications until all clear. Ah, so you've come to kill me, have you? Or die trying. All right, die then. Wait, wait, this is a trap. It's a ruse. Stop, stop. Wait, is this? No, this seems suspicious. This is a ruse. This is a ruse and I'm not falling for it. Nope. I'm not playing your game. This is a ruse. Take this. I ran out of magic, by the way, so. What are these noises? Oh wait, hold on. Here goes! Here goes! Here goes, my friends. Oh yeah. I need to stop pressing the stick. Also, what the heck? You just hit me with lightning. They modify enemies to fill the phantasm bar. Conjure spectral arms to increase your attack power. That's interesting. Excuse me. I'm gonna die also. Your turn. Smell me? Move, move! Oh god. Stop. Here goes! Damned monster. Come here, you. You're next. Modify this one? Oh, I guess not. Blast! Oh, wait for it. Hey, I was just talking about you, best buddy. Okay, that was a cheap shot, but fine. Hold RB and press Y when the phantasm bar is full to inflict royal retribution on your enemies. What, is the royal guard now fighting with me? What, what's happening? Oh, Infernian, grant me the power to take Somnus, his people, and his cursed kingdom, and burn them all to the ground! No!
I was the one chosen to be king. Oh. Oh no. Bye. Arden. My love, I'm coming. Kill me so we can be together in the afterlife. Era. Forgive me. I defied the will of the gods and revealed to Somnus. You had been chosen to be king. Huh? 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 I never dreamt he would try to kill you. But he did. <laughs> Somnus fooled everyone, so he could usurp the throne. Everything that happened, it's all his fault. No. Listen to me. It's my fault. I'm the one who ruined your future. This was divine retribution for my sins. You've no sins to atone for. Gods! Answer me! Why have you burdened us with this fate? Era! Oh, no! Era! Please! In the names of the gods above, Fulfill your calling, Arden, and punish me for my sins! Era. Kill me! That's right, kill her. Put that monster out of its misery, just like I did. Like you saved that innocent man by turning him into a demon. Please, Arden. You must live. I can't. Not without you. <laughs> Come. Why not give the lady what she wants? No, no, no. Somnus, get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you failed to save her. No surprise. A monster can do not but destroy. <laughs> Why do you torment me? What a terrible brother. destroy everything you built. <laughs> Hear me, gods above. No longer shall I supplicate you for pardon. No longer shall I sojourn toward the light. Nay, the path I intend to tread is paved with blood and darkness. No longer shall I seek your guidance. This path is mine to tread alone. 